Now, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a social media person, so you'll see uh, these, these blue birds. Does anyone know what that is? Twitter? Twitter? Does anyone have Twitter? Yeah. Tweet! Let's go! You got a photo? <laughs> I'm at the presentation! Andrew's awesome! I want to do it now, I don't want to do it at the end, it might be any good. All right. So, um, it, it traction, what's it all about? Um, Attraction is a word that I made up. And the reason I made it up is because my name, Andrew Ford, there's a lot of people out there with my name. There's a lot of people doing social media, there's a lot of people doing personal branding. I'm like, how do I stand out? I'll just make up a word. So I did, and I trademarked that word. And it's mine, I own it, right? You search on Facebook or Twitter, and I'm the only one you'll find, right? Because that's, that's how you can stand out, is you make up something, right? If I could think, or smart enough to think of Google or Facebook, I would have done that as well. So, attraction is all about a methodology to bring stuff to you. So, to attract the opportunities in your life that you want to have. So, we've heard a lot about this morning about making changes and taking action and doing things. So, I'm going to give you a six-part practical guide to creating attraction. Sound good? Anyone want more of that in their lives, right? Yeah. And it's not just business. I mean, I do business presentations every day, but this is... Obviously my story, and it's a little bit more personal than that. But it's the same solution. It's the same steps that you would do either way that you go. And I learned this from someone who's, you know, done reasonably well for himself. You know, he, I think he'd be happy with what he's achieved in his life. Does anyone know who this guy is? <laughs> who? <laughs> right. Does everyone, just show hands, does everyone know who this guy is? Know his name? Yep, hands up, good. Who would agree with the statement that he's an inspiring individual? Let's have our hands up. Who would agree with that statement? Couple? Yeah? Okay. It's probably about 80%. So what I ask you is, has anyone ever met him? Who has had a face-to-face -face conversation with Steve Jobs? No. Steve? Great. Thanks. <laughs> Active participant. <laughs> Can I have more lollipops? That's what he said. Either have I, right? So how do we know what he's like? So 80% of people said, he's inspiring. We all know his name. How do we know that? Any, any suggestions? Media. Media, right? Who produces the media? Him, <laughs> right? Is Andrew Ford inspiring? Well, Yay. yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. That's my, that's my sister there. <laughs> <laughs> Got a few of my staff members here, they'll, they'll probably agree if I tell them to. So we think it's inspiring because we've learned through social media and other products that he's inspiring. And I go, I wonder if you had, if you were standing in my position right here and you had 100 prospects for your business, would they agree with your brand statement? They may be, maybe not, I don't know. What would they say about you? Would they all go, yes, that person is just like that. They're creative. They make the best coffee. You know? They do this really well. How would they know? Are you telling them? No. Steve Jobs just went on there and he told He just did media. You always get one in the room, don't you? I'll tell you. <laughs> so, Steve Jobs created a persona and he was the best at doing this. And he did it so well that people would sleep outside his building to buy his latest product. Oh my God, right? Ben, do you have people sleeping outside your cafe till you open? After. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after, go after going there last week, you got to agree, right? Yeah, I see that. I get it, right? I have people sleeping outside a social star all the time, right? They just don't want to buy anything from me. They're just sleeping, right? So let me ask you this. In branding terms, what does this mean? Is this inspiring? Is this logo inspiring? Yeah. But without this guy, is it as inspiring? No, right? People matter. People count. So for all the business owners out there, how much of you is going into this? Online, that people can see. Telling people why you do what you do. Did Steve Jobs get up at Stanford University and go, oh, I've got the best music player coming out? You wait until you see it. It's a thousand songs in your pocket. No. He talked about being inspiring. You know what he talked about? He talked about getting cancer. Has anyone seen that presentation? It's probably the most well-known presentation. I watched it only about a year ago, and I went, it wasn't that impressive, <laughs> to be honest. 
He wasn't that great a speaker, but his message was really powerful. He just told three stories, three simple stories. And no different, different scale, no different to the stories we've heard today. People coming close to not making it and getting through. No different here. Just a bigger world stage. So what about this? We talked about this product before, very useful. <coughs> I've just started some attraction in my business. I encourage you to do the same. You know, how are you stimulating people to help you to share your message? Because it's way better coming from someone else than from you. So we're gonna learn some strategies to create attraction for you and your business and in your personal life as well. But before we do that, I wanna take you back, way back. Who was born before 1971? Oh my God. <laughs> Normally I say this is nobody. <laughs> Good audience, I like you guys. So 1971, that was when I was born. So that'd make me 34. <laughs> Never been really good at maths. Now, I love this one because it goes, Intel released the word's first microprocessor. <laughs> it was a signal, it was a sign. Me and Steve Jobs, we're like brothers. <laughs> you can see the similarities. We're white, we're male, kind of handsome in a little bit. And Steve Jobs, I mean, you look at our names even, right? We share vowels. There's an E in Andrew, there's an E in Steve, Jobs. Yeah. You can see how it all works, right? Almost the same number of letters. So, I was born the year that this microprocessor, microprocessor came out and little did I know at the time, but that would determine a lot of what I do in my life. Some follow astrology, I follow, you know, these things. It could have been anything, really. It could have been Evil Knievel looking down there, right? Okay, so 1971. I'll take you back for those who were born after that date. Oh, that's not so good. What's happening here? There you go. The Vietnam War was on. And in black and white, right? Didn't even have colour then. I remember when we got our first colour TV. You remember that? First colour TV. It's like, whoa, colour. It's almost as good as going outside now. <laughs> Fantastic. That was the latest computing. How good's that, right? That was a room. RCA, I think it is. Who are these guys? Are they still around? What is going on? Look at these pants. Fantastic. Who's that? Michael Jackson. Jackson 5. We'll show some pictures of him later. He looks a bit different. Elvis was still alive. That's the early version of Elvis, of course. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was a bodybuilder. You remember that? Right? What's he doing now? I don't know. He's space travel or something, probably. So that was the era that I grew up in. And it was a very different time. So remember this. There was no mobile phones. There was no internet. We didn't have a computer. As I said, we just... We barely had a colour TV. So technology back then didn't depict any of our lives. So how did I end up in social media? How did that work? Well, I'm going to tell you. So this is me back in the day. It's a bit fuzzy because photos, you know, weren't so good back then. That's me in the Miller shirt. It was quite trendy at the time, I thought. Right? This is me kicking the footy. You know, I grew up in Melbourne. What do you do? Your grandparents make you barrack for Collingwood, so, you know get picked on all your life and you know our mother uh, I say our because my family's here today here's a picture of us there's my sister in the pre days and she was a bit of a hippie which is fantastic so she was a yoga loving grow your own vegetables vegan hippie she was a hipster right and now she'd be like hashtag coolest mum in the world right <laughs> but back then it wasn't quite that way getting dropped off to school in your little beat up car and she gets out and she's got a little swami uniform on, she's got a dot in the forehead and I go to a private school. All the, all the kids are getting dropped off with their mums in tennis skirts and their little Mercedes, right? It's a little bit hard to take. You know, we had a guy living in our backyard in a pyramid. That's not a joke. That really happened, right? My mum thought I was like a little Buddha, you know? Andrew, so spiritual, You're amazing. You can do big things in the world. And yeah, maybe that'll happen one day, I hope. <laughs> she couldn't be here today. She broke her ankle a while ago and she's a bit immobile. Even though she did go to Europe for three months, but anyhow. She loves me in her own way. And <laughs> she, ga she gave me a lot, of, a lot of life lessons, which I'm going to share a few of. Now, there is one thing which is a bit sad, is that there's no big person here. So I grew up without a dad. And if you read my book in the first page, I'll tell you all about that. So we won't cover too much here. 
But that was a little bit of a gap in my life. And what did that leave me thinking? I was like, why? Why, when I go to school, is my mum so different and I don't have a dad and there's all these, you know, nuclear families all around me? Why, you know, and when I was in, in primary school, I really didn't care that much. I was like, whatever. But as you grow into teenagehood and you go to high school, it's a very different thing. And you start questioning, you know, why do I not fit in? Why am I a bit different? You know what? Everyone's different. That's, that's, that's the truth of it, right? But it was hard. And what it made me was angry. And this is what I turned into. I don't know if you... Jason knew me back then. Jason's my long-term friend. And in fact, Eva's here today. We went to primary school together. And Jason and I, we were both like this. I should have a picture of you up here, mate. I've got to stop embarrassing myself and start embarrassing other people. So me and my friend Cuervo, um, we were good friends. And this is me skiing in New Zealand, having a great time. You know, you know the neck tattoos. I was, I was an early adopter, right? They're just cool now. So it's me and my friends in this, you know, very palatial accommodation in New Zealand, <laughs> having a good time. School, you know, school wasn't that important. What are we going to learn there? You know, it's not going to teach me how to go off a jump and you know do shots and do cool stuff like that. So I was a little bit angry, and. My life was, was going along okay. I was working in a warehouse, uh, delivered pizzas at one stage, did finish school, which was a great thing. So, you know, my mum pushed me through that, which was fantastic. But really, I wasn't really going anywhere. And I'm sure a lot of us are like this in teenagehood. And then one day, something changed. <laughs> I learned how to count. And what happened was, my mum, again, decided to interject. And she said, Andrew, I think you need to go see a psychologist. And I went, okay, I don't think it was that bad, but okay, man, I'll do that. So I went along, well, actually the night before I went out, and then I went along and I was feeling a bit hungover and I was a bit late, and I went and saw this guy, and it wasn't actually, you know, to see what was wrong with my head. She never thought there was anything wrong with me. It was to do an intelligence test to show my potential. And I thought, geez, this is going to be embarrassing. And so I went there in three hours of tests. I kid you not, this guy was thorough. I'm doing written tests, I'm doing verbal tests, I'm doing spatial tests. He's asked me all these questions. It was hard, right? And then I get the results back the next week and what do you know? I've got some ability. Apparently I could be a CEO or a judge or a whole bunch of other stuff. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So what happened? Fast forward. I had some knowledge. 1990. You know, things are changing in the world. Now some delegates out. Tom Cruise is the sexiest man alive, <laughs> right? I mean, Tom, we look a bit the same, surely, right? <laughs> Jump on the couch. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he's now in movies, moved on from bodybuilding. Michael Jackson, he's grown up, changed a little bit, not going in the sun so much. Okay, this is the latest in computing. That's the latest in mobile technology. I had one of those phones, it was the best thing ever. And there's Google Glasses, right? <laughs> technology, it's invading my life. So I go and work for a technology company, of course, right? That's, you know, I'm born with Intel. It's all, it's all infused in my brain. I do a couple of degrees because I now feel that I'm capable and smart. I work for some big companies and life's pretty good. I go through my world and, you know, I'm winning competitions. You know, I think I've, I've made it. This is all pretty cool. It's all very cool. However, then something was kind of missing and people would, you know, resonate with this. You go through life, and I think we had in a lot of the stories today, you go through and things are great, and then you're like, you know, something's not quite great. And I feel like this guy in this picture, this is actually not me, by the way, this is out of a movie, <laughs> but it felt like the world was a bit grey. You know, the coffee didn't taste as good, the drinks didn't taste as good, the, the work wasn't fulfilling. It just wasn't, I didn't know what was wrong. I felt like this guy was grey in a colourful world. And I get to this point in the road, and I didn't actually have a car crash, but... I felt like my world did have a car crash. And I had to change things. And I'm like, wow. You know, I've, I've grown this corporate ladder. I literally had a white picket fence house with the two cars and the whole shebang. And, it was, and that was great, because that's what I thought the people wanted. I didn't want this hippie upbringing. I didn't want to be a little Buddha. <laughs> I didn't want to, you know, I thought, get into the real world. Let's forget all this mumbo jumbo. Let's go and get a real job, grow up get an education, get a job in a corporate. And that was great. Had a great time, except for here. Good up here, good in here, but not in the heart. 
So I decided to do some changes. I'm like, what's my why? Everyone knows this why thing, you know? I was searching for the why. Now I'm asking more specifically, what, what, what's it all about? Some would call it a midlife crisis, I disagree. I mean, I went out and got a tattoo like everyone else does, right? <laughs> Surely, that's what you do. You go overseas, you get yourself a tattoo. And that solves everything. So thanks for coming. No, so that's not it, that's not it. No. There's more, there's more. So I go along and I start my own business. And I go, that's the answer. You know, I'm gonna take a little bit of the spirituality, I'm gonna take a little bit of the business in corporate, I'm gonna mash them together, and I'm gonna create this new system. This new way of helping people to find their whys, but not just find it, to do it. As you've heard before this morning, it's about taking action. And I have a process. Everyone has a process, right? This is my process. Oh, so what I did, I got some staff, got myself a cool office, got some, you know, crazy teenagers to work for me. They don't work for me anymore, of course. They went and started their own bloody business. <laughs> what do they do? They make websites. Competitors. I went and did some presentations and started writing some blogs. And notice health, you go, Tori. You know, running, doing that sort of thing, wrote a book. It's my kids there, hanging out, having some fun. <laughs> and what I found was when I shared my why, people liked it. I thought, God, you know, I was telling someone before that I used to go out and go, you know, everything's fantastic, everything's great, and just pretend everything was, you know, fantastic. And what I found out when I shared more about me and my story and you know, my why, everyone was like, yeah, I want a bit of that too. So this blog I wrote got all these views and all these people liking my post and sharing and I thought, wow, I've really hit on something here. And all this crazy stuff happened. So people started inviting me to be ambassadors and flying me all over the world to do stuff and meet famous people. I look a bit like him too, actually. Yeah. Do you know, a funny story, I gave my book to a client and she came up to the meeting First time I'd met her face to face, and she's like, oh, Andrew, great to meet you. You look much shorter in your picture. <laughs> I'm like, um, how can you tell how tall I am from my photo? What's the <laughs> brand perception, right? Okay, so what happened after I did all this? All these people started to come and want to do stuff with me. Interviews, articles, referrals, oh, referrals. <laughs> and I found out that all this stuff was just coming. So all my life I've worked hard. You know, I'm a big you know, believer in work. Worked through university. I had 14 years of business school part-time. It's a lot of years of study, right? I worked in corporates. I worked hard. And it got me a lot. But now, I, wasn't, I was working hard, but it was fun because I loved it. And all this stuff just was coming to me. And I go, that's fantastic. Now, how did it happen? The first step was I created an intention. And this is no different to the process that Steve Jobs did to create Apple. The second time. The first step is, what do you want? And the key is this. What you want has to be based on your highest values. What is most important to you? And make your business around that. And if you do, the old adage, never work a day in your life. Right? How do you know what your highest value is? There's lots of process to find out your why. Where's my why? It's just sitting over there being cheeky, right? That's my why. Your why is hidden in your biggest challenge. Didn't have a dad? What do I do? I want to be the best dad. Makes sense, right? So when clients come and talk to me, and I find out a bit more about them, I go, tell me about yourself. I go, when do you want to start? I go, where were you born? And I talk about their family. And I talk about their upbringing. And what it reveals to me is a pattern in their life because your biggest challenge will become your biggest reward. Start a business around that. All right, when you set an intention, like Steve Jobs did, right, we're gonna change the business, we're gonna cut down from 100 million different products to four, you gotta pay attention. Because when you set an intention, you gotta see what happens. And what'll happen is you go into search mode, right? Ever bought a car? Right, I'm gonna buy a white Jeep Cherokee. And then all of a sudden, I can't get away from them. They're on the road everywhere. There's ads for them. People are talking about them. It just opens up your subconscious to the potential that you've just created. But it's gotta be crystal clear and it's gotta be based on your highest value. And opportunities will present themselves. Maybe not in the form that you're used to, but you've gotta be open enough to see how they link together. 
Step three, you've got to take action. And we know this from every presentation, you've got to take the action, right? Action is acting on intention. Did you see how I did that? Right? <laughs> Pretty clever, right? You will not know the purpose of this sometimes, but trust your instincts. If you're doing it on your biggest why, somehow you'll know what to do. Steve Jobs, when he quit university, you know, quit, has anyone read his book? Yeah? Went through university, he was a bit of a hippie, funnily enough, that's another connection. And he quit university, couldn't afford it, and so he started doing calligraphy. That's nice. Not really what you do to set up a computer company. But years later, when he came to creating the first word processing, <coughs> geez, that came in handy, and that differentiated him and his company from the rest. It was a major stepping stone in his, and he's like, in his speech he says, going forward you can't see where the dots line up. But in hindsight, you can see, ah, oh, I see how all of those disparate things led me to the perfect place of now. And that is why you've got to trust your instincts and trust yourself. So you've got to take that action. What's Newton's law of physics? I didn't do science in school, but I looked this up on the internet. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, okay? So when you do something, something's going to happen. All right? In my business, I go, great, let's get on your LinkedIn. Let's make it look good. Oh, people will see stuff. Yeah. Some people might not like it. Yeah, that's right. Right? Like Tori said, surround yourself with the people who do like it. They're the people who are going to help you on your way. Adjust and modify on the reaction. This process takes time. Who's got a small business? Some of us, right? Years. It takes years to perfect action, reaction, learn, adapt, modify, get better. What's the next step? Once you know, once you've repeated the process and you've done it well, you get into attraction. Stuff comes to you because you're in flow. Do you know they've actually, everyone's heard of flow? They've actually modelled that on the human brain and it's a real thing. It's not some woo-woo stuff that I did when I was in the communes. It's true. Is that there's a mental state called flow, such as Olympic athlete, when they run, they're in flow. And it's a drug, it's like a high. And you'll know when you're in flow because things are easy and things happen. People just come to you. You're like, geez, I, I need this in my business. And oh, I just met this person who's going to give me just this for my business. It's great. Okay? But only if you're congruent with yourself. The last one is e-traction. How does attraction turn to e-traction? I call it autopilot. The problem with corporate that I found is that my income went like this and my time commitment to the business went like this. I'm like, that's great, but I want my time to go like that and my income to go like that, right? It's a dream. How do you do that? You've got to create attraction. You've got to get online. You've got to be digital. Trav's a digital nomad. Right? He travels the world. Business just happens around him. Right? He doesn't need to be there. That's the life that we want to lead as small business owners. So, it's not enough to know your why. You have to live your why. And if you take one thing away from today, and this has been told a few times, is this. Don't just know what it is. You've got to do it. And it's not hard. I mean, it's not easy. It is hard. What am I talking about? It's hard because you've got to make change, and change is difficult. However, it's worthwhile. So, this is my why. And I normally have a photo because they're not here, but here they are today. <laughs> so, these are my kids. And, you know, I love spending time with them. And I don't want to be at work till 8 o'clock at night and not ha be able to take them to football or do things with them. So, I had to make a change. And I did that, and two years out, I'm glad to say that it's been the best thing I ever did. And thanks Stephen Mason over here for believing in my business from day one and invest being one of my investors. Thank you for that. These sort of people come into your lives for a reason to make this stuff happen. All right? So think of your why, write it down, make some actions. <coughs> and that's it for me. I'm Andrew Ford. I'm the attractionist. Thank you for coming. Please do connect with me. Tweet if you wish. If you don't, you don't get a log puppy off your back, right? <laughs> thanks, Rob. Well done. Excellent.